Well, I read in the paper just the other day that freedom fighters, they are on their way. They come and find bus and an airplane too. They would even walk if you would ask them to. Among the first wave of recruits to arrive in Mississippi was 20-year-old Andrew Goodman of New York City. He traveled with James Cheney, age 21, and Michael Schwerner, age 24, two workers from the Congress of Racial Equality. I was introduced to James when he came in. And uh, James at first started uh, working with the young ladies because he was in and out. He and, Je he and Mickey was in and out of the different areas in the county. Uh, primarily Newton and primarily Philadelphia. Uh, they had gone up to Philadelphia and they were uh, trying to set up and organize in Philadelphia, Mississippi. Uh, we call James J.E. That, um, that's the name we know him by. His name it was James Earl Cheney. J.E. was my oldest brother. And um, I always looked up to him in the family. Well, him and my older sister as well, but certainly looked up to him. In the family, to me, I somewhat, um, as um, as a youngster, idolized him, I guess, because he was my older brother. And to me, he could do anything. And um, going to school, my earliest um, recollections is um, walking to school um, with him and my oldest sister, I mean, we walked together as uh, as a group of kids in the neighborhood, going to the Catholic school, and um, we were always. I always felt safe being um, being in his presence and around him. Because COPO was made up of the NAACP, SNCC, SCLC, and CORE, and each body was to provide something. Our area here, Meridian, was core. Uh, Mickey, Reader, and James was under core. Okay, and their director, uh, the uh, guy who was in charge of them, was Dave Dennis. See, I assigned them to that area, Meridian. That was my decision to do that. And I had to reflect on a lot of decisions I was making. It was sort of like, it was a war and... So James had been stopped by Deputy Rainey and Deputy Rainey had uh, warned Cheney that if he come back up there again with that civil rights stuff that uh, they were going to do something to him. August 7th, 1964. Hundreds gathered in Meridian, Mississippi to mourn James Cheney. Among the mourners was Cheney's eight-year-old brother, Ben. I feel that he's gotten his freedom, Amen. and we're still fighting for it. But what I want to talk about right now is the living debt that we have right among our midst, not only in the state of Mississippi, but throughout the nation. Those are the people who don't care those who do care but don't have the guts enough to stand up for it, and those people who are busy up in Washington and other places using my freedom and my life to play politics with. That includes the president on down to the governor of the state of Mississippi, you see. We 